So I think that there are dumb ideas. There are things that simply don't work. As you said, 25 years ago, if you'd asked most certainly large organizations how to build software, they'd have all said waterfall. And yeah. that's just wrong. It doesn't work. It's, it, you know, it, it never really works. The only way that a waterfall project has ever worked, in, as far as I've ever seen, is where people cheat the process because the process doesn't help. It just gets in the way. So Agile was a vi- seems to me was a vitally important step to get us onto a, a saner footing in terms of let, let's just start organising work about trying things out and seeing what works and dropping the things that don't work and keeping the things that do work. And, and you know, that kind of idea of inspecting and adapting and reflecting and, you know, growing our ability to change, maintaining our ability to to change our minds, change our systems, change direction, seems to me a foundational concept, certainly in what I talk about. And I think from reading the things that you talk about, similarly for you. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Then yeah. you know, that seemed to be a huge step, an enormous step forward that people that didn't actually live through the late 90s and, and before in terms of what software development practice was like probably don't understand the impact that this had. I had somebody recently on social media saying that that nobody ever did waterfall. Well, <laughs> yes, yes, they did, and it didn't yeah. work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, but I got to take a little exception there because sure. I don't think there are uh, a priori dumb ideas. Okay. Like, and I don't think necessarily that waterfall is bad, right? Or mm-hmm. let's put it this way. I don't have evidence in the current world that waterfall was bad. Okay. Um, what I think is what you said about change and uh, having the courage to experiment. Yeah. Uh, I think a whole part of agility that people forget is that agility applies to itself, mm-hmm. right? And so you have to be willing to experiment with your practices yeah. in order to say, yeah, this is good, this is bad. Um, so rather than say waterfall is bad, what I would be interested to see is, okay, I think waterfall is bad, but I don't know. So I'm going to do this next project waterfall and see what mm-hmm. happens, you know? And yeah, of course, that might get you sued and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you would learn something along the way, you know? And so I don't, as soon as people start saying dumb ideas, then it kind of strikes me as being dangerous because we could throw a very, very attractive baby out with that both bathwater if we're not careful. Um, one of the examples I had about that, um, so I have been testing unit testing since 1980 sort of thing um automated tests part of my blood blah 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 and i got really upset uh with people around about 2008 2009 who turned into test nazis Mm -hmm. and they were doing things like, well, I'm not accepting your code because I, it doesn't have 100% coverage, you know? Um, and they became really, really obnoxious. And they mm-hmm. were, it's, it was religion, you know? It's like, you have to have 100% coverage and you have to do this and that and that. So I used to test a lot and I thought, okay, let's see what happens if I stop testing. So I did. And I ran for, I don't know, four, six months, something like that, uh, without writing a single test. And at the end of it, my code, as far as I could tell from things like bug frequency, my code was identical to the code it was before. Um, And part of that, I think, is because I had been writing tests so long that I'd kind of internalized a lot Mm -hmm. of the benefit of testing. So when I was writing my my actual code, I was always thinking, how would I test this? Yeah, And that was driving APIs and it was driving decoupling and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't actually need the test for that. Um, I also found that not having tests actually made me way more agile 
when it came to making changes? Because I'm sure everybody's had this thing where, you know, you, you make what is on the surface a fairly small change and you end up breaking a hundred tests, mm -hmm. you know? So um, at the same time, I think tests are a useful safety net uh, for some things. So my current strategy is that I will typically write some tests, particularly for things which are either tricky or that I want to explore. Mm -hmm. And then typically I'll delete them once yeah. I finish that section of the code. And so I'm not carrying the baggage. If there are ones that are kind of like foundational, I'll keep those in, but they'll be very rare. Um, but that's just an example, I think, because, you know, that would fail me every single job interview that I went to, <laughs> you know, because obviously, obviously you have to have tests. Obviously it's important to have tests, right? And that's just pure received information. That's no, not based on any kind of experience or experimentation or anything. Um, uh, so so I, I, I think I disagree with you slightly on, on, on that one. So, so I, I don't, think that I'm a test Nazi. Certainly, I'm not going to reject anybody's code because of certain levels of coverage and, and, and so on. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, when you started describing your experiment with dropping tests, whether you thought that was because of the things that you'd learned from testing before, because I've had a similar experience. If I write code these days without writing tests, which is fairly unusual, but if, if I do, my design is still influenced by mm -hmm. the kinds of design choices that I would make in order to make my code testable. And, and for me, that's one of the values. So, uh, like you, it's one of the comments that I often get about test driven development, I, I suppose I'm probably thought of as a fairly hardline promoter of test driven development because I am. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's an important tool in the box. But somebody asked me recently whether I thought that test-driven development was an essential component of continuous delivery, and I said no, and I think I surprised them. I think I think it's a really good idea, and I think for most teams, I would recommend very strongly that you practice continuous deliver delivery. But can you do continuous delivery without test-driven development? Yeah, you can. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're not they're not essential parts of the same thing. So, well, so, so the other, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, presumably, though, for you, for continuous delivery, you would want to have integration level tests. Yes. So what you're what you're talking about here is more the the bread and butter, you know, test every function type tests. So 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 I tend not to think of it in those terms. So I think of it more in terms of. The cycles that are interesting. So, so I want a fast cycle to support the development process. And primarily, I think to do what you were talking about. So I want insight into my design choices is one of the big pieces of value. So, mm -hmm. um, so I particularly when I'm exploring or, or experimenting, I use tests then because that's what tells me that my design's starting to smell. If you know, and if I'm nervous of wanting to change my code and it breaking hundreds of tests, that's probably a warning sign for me that my design sucks. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to be looking for other ways of organizing the design to be less prone to that risk. Um, yeah, no, I, I, that's valid. That's valid. Yeah. But the other thing, the, the other thing that I'd want to pick up on and really yeah, yeah. strongly agree with you on is um, the idea of, you know, trying things out, you know, when, when you discuss, so, so I wasn't, I wasn't dismissing, I don't think I was water, dismissing waterfall out of hand. I've tried it. <laughs> I've tried it more oh, yeah. than I want to. And I don't believe it works for software development. I think it works well for other things, clearly, because waterfall is kind of a production line and production line work really nicely for some kinds of things when you've got a repeatable process, but I, I don't think it works well for software development and I'll be fine with, I don't want to do it anymore, but I'll be fine with people doing the experiment again. And I agree with you that we shouldn't be dogmatic and dismiss any idea without without evidence trying it out beforehand. So I'm not saying that ideas a priori are, you know, some ideas are dumb, 
without trying them. But I think that once you've tried them, you can say that's a bad idea. Oh, yeah. But I think also when you say it's a bad idea, you always, always have to qualify it with for me. I, because... I, so I'm, I, I'm not sure that's true. So, so, so you know, the earth isn't flat. And so that's just factually incorrect. And I think well, that there uh, are yeah, ideas like that. Okay, but that's not an idea. That's a fact. Okay, what we're talking about here is process. We're talking about about things that work for you. Yes.